smoking is often used in acting performances to flesh out a character or setting, particularly to signify a sense of sophistication, historical authenticity, or rebelliousness. But many stars lit up in their personal lives, too. You're about to discover the shocking truth about Hollywood stars' real-life smoking habits. From icons to rebels, we're counting down the 50 worst smokers in Hollywood history. Number 50. Dean Martin Dean Martin, a legendary entertainer known for his smooth songs and charismatic presence. His distinctive husky voice, shaped by years of smoking, became a trademark of mid-20th century culture. Unsurprisingly, Dean was a dedicated cigarette smoker. Throughout his life, he favored Freddie Mercury's brand, which he likely picked up at around the age of 16. But fame came with a price. Amidst his enduring popularity, Dean's health deteriorated unchecked. In 1991, at the age of 45, he received a devastating diagnosis of AIDS. Unfortunately, this was not the full extent of his suffering. Dean battled lung cancer, emphysema, and Alzheimer's, conditions also discovered that year. Despite the uphill struggle, he managed to quit smoking. However, the burden of illness made normal life a challenge. Tragically, Dean's story came to an end at the age of 78 in 1995. Number 49. Nat King Cole Nat King Cole, undeniably one of the greatest voices in music history, holds a special place in the hearts of many. His recordings resonate with timeless melodies, yet his personal habits tell a different story. A devoted, cool, menthol cigarette enthusiast, Nat King Cole's connection with smoking went beyond a casual indulgence. Before stepping into the recording studio, he would often chain-smoke several cigarettes in succession, believing it contributed to his distinctively deep, crooning voice. His commitment to this routine led him to consume roughly three packs of cigarettes daily. But the reality goes even further. While often cited as a three-pack-a-day smoker, the truth reveals a more intense relationship with tobacco. Nat King Cole was, in fact, known to burn through four to five packs a day holding a cigarette in his hand for practically every waking moment. Number 48. Buster Keaton Buster Keaton was a legendary silent film comedian, but he had a darker habit behind the scenes. Keaton's affinity for smoking was evident during his acting career, often leading to persistent coughing fits on set. During a trip to Toronto, he managed to appear on a Canadian television quiz show, showcasing his boundless energy. Tragically, Keaton's heavy smoking caught up with him. On February 1, 1966, he succumbed to lung cancer. Despite his deteriorating health, he continued smoking, even while battling the disease. His lung cancer, which he valiantly endured, robbed him of physical comfort but spared him the intense pain. As the disease progressed, his ability to speak and breathe became increasingly compromised. The final chapter of his life, marked by the struggle for breath and speech, ended on January 30th, 1966. Number 47. Jackie Gleason Jackie Gleason, a larger-than-life figure known for his comedic brilliance, had an equally formidable appetite for indulgence. His daily routine included devouring multiple meals in a single setting, a habit that extended to consuming half a gallon of ice cream. But his vices didn't end there. He was a prodigious smoker, working his way through an astonishing five packs of cigarettes each day. Amidst his vibrant personality, Gleason humorously attributed his waning libido in middle age to his hefty appetite, quipping that, quote, sex for a fat man is much ado about puffing, end quote. His voracious cravings for food, cigarettes, and scotch whiskey often made headlines, showcasing his extravagant lifestyle. You and I have simpatico. Number 46. Johnny Carson Johnny Carson, the iconic host of The Tonight Show, was a notable smoker during his tenure on the show. He often used cigarettes as props on air, a practice that eventually waned as public perception of smoking shifted. In a candid interview with Mike Wallace on 60 Minutes in 1979, Carson openly discussed his smoking habit. 
He admitted to feeling guilty about his compulsive smoking and even joked about needing extreme measures like electric shock therapy or reruns of Gilligan's Island to break free from it. Number 45. Rudolph Valentino Rudolph Valentino once used this unsmoked cigarette from a Lucky Strike cigarette package when he was a movie star. Considered a major sex symbol during the 1920s, Valentino was known to be a seductive actor during his career. The cigarette was able to imbue itself with Rudolph's seductive qualities. Number 44. Frank Sinatra The man who held a glass of Jack Daniels as naturally as he held a microphone, and whose raspy voice carried both melodies and the weight of a lifetime of indulgence. Lake of Fire. Ha! Try quitting a two-pack-a-day habit cold turkey. With a cigarette perched between his fingers and a tumbler of Jack Daniels in hand, he exuded an aura of effortless cool. During his funeral, his children filled his pockets with his favorite things. A bottle of Jack Daniels, a pack of Camel cigarettes, and a Zippo lighter found their place beside him. Number 43. Audrey Meadows Audrey Meadows, known for her role in the iconic television show The Honeymooners, was entwined with the allure of cigarette smoking for many years. However, this habit would eventually lead her down a tragic path. In 1995, she received a devastating diagnosis, lung cancer. Given a mere year to live, she chose to forgo aggressive treatment and instead embraced palliative care. Audrey passed away on February 3, 1996 slipping into a coma at Cedars sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Her internment in Holy Cross Cemetery, next to her second husband, bears an unfortunate inaccuracy on her headstone, stating her birth date is 1926. Number 42. Jerry Lewis Jerry Lewis, the multi-talented comedian, actor, and director, left an indelible mark on the entertainment world. At age 91, he passed away in his Las Vegas home surrounded by his loving family. While the official cause was cited as heart failure, his journey was a tapestry of heart-damaging factors that defied the odds. Lewis navigated a life marked by three documented heart attacks, a slew of potentially unrecorded ones, and interventions involving stents that sometimes carried their own risks. Smoking, a habit cultivated over years, further strained his heart, as did performing in smoke-laden venues. The backdrop included excess alcohol, a diet high in detrimental elements, painkiller dependence, diabetes, and the challenges of pulmonary fibrosis treated with prednisone. His health battles extended to obesity, prostate cancer, depression, and recurring bleeding episodes. He may have died as a result of insufficient blood flow to his brain due to diminished heart strength. Number 41. Irene Ryan Irene Ryan, celebrated for her iconic role as Granny on the Beverly Hillbillies, led a life marked by heavy smoking. Her penchant for smoking was evident both on and offset, earning her the reputation of a chain smoker among her castmates. On March 10, 1973, tragedy struck during a performance of Pippin. Ryan suffered what appeared to be a stroke, prompting her to return to California and subsequent hospitalization. The diagnosis revealed an inoperable glioblastoma, a malignant brain tumor. Despite her valiant battle, Irene Ryan succumbed to her health struggles on April 26, 1973, at the age of 70. Her passing was attributed to glioblastoma and arteriosclerotic heart disease. She found her final resting place in a mausoleum at Woodlawn Memorial Cemetery in Santa Monica, where she was interred beside her sister, Anna Thompson. Number 40. Mo Howard Mo Howard, a prominent figure in the legendary Three Stooges comedy trio, had a familial connection to the iconic magician Harry Houdini. His wife, Helen Schonberger, was Houdini's cousin. Mo and Helen had two children, Joan Howard and Paul Howard. Throughout his adult life, Mo Howard was a devoted smoker. Tragically, he succumbed to the perils of his habit, passing away from lung cancer on May 4, 1975. His wife Helen also faced health challenges and tragically died of a heart attack later that same year. 
The Three Stooges legacy lives on, as Mo earned a posthumous star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1983. Mo's autobiography was left unfinished upon his death. Fortunately, his daughter Joan took up the task, completing the book, which was published as Mo Howard and the Three Stooges in 1977. Number 39. Frank Zappa Frank Zappa, known for his musical innovation and fearless creativity, battled not just addiction to his art, but to cigarettes as well. Despite his prostate cancer diagnosis, Zappa remained chained to his smoking habit, a habit that ultimately contributed to his untimely passing in 1993, just two weeks shy of his 53rd birthday. In a revealing interview with Frank Zappa's brother, Bob Zappa, it becomes evident how deeply ingrained his smoking habit was. When asked if Frank smoked as much as their father, Bob's response was unequivocal. Quote, more. Frank used to say tobacco was a vegetable, end quote. Frank's chain smoking was a constant companion, regardless of whether he was performing, rehearsing, writing, or simply living life. Number 38, Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby, a multi-talented entertainer known for his acting, singing, and radio presence, is also remembered as an iconic pipe smoker. His slender, long-stemmed pipes became a trademark in the pipe smoking community. Interestingly, Crosby's shift to pipe smoking was influenced by his mother's aversion to cigarettes, showcasing his consideration for her preferences. In his book Bing, Charles Thompson recounts Crosby's transition to pipes stating that he gave up cigarettes due to his mother's disapproval. Crosby's affinity for pipes was evident throughout his career, and he even offered advice on choosing and caring for pipes. In his own words, quote, there's nothing like a good pipe and a good tobacco, end quote. Being Crosby's legacy as a pipe smoking icon lives on, a true pipe smoking icon. Such a good day for morning to Number 37. George Harrison George Harrison, renowned for his musical talent as a member of the Beatles, had a significant smoking habit that took a toll on his health. Harrison's smoking addiction led him to consume around four packs of cigarettes a day, occasionally supplemented with cigars. His relationship with smoking changed over time, fluctuating between one to two packs during less stressful periods, and escalating to three or even four packs when facing higher stress levels. Harrison's addiction to nicotine was not uncommon during that era, as many individuals struggled with smoking habits. Sadly, despite battling smoking-related cancer for years, George Harrison's life was cut short in 2001. Number 36. Jackie Kennedy Although she was not a Hollywood actress, I think she deserves a mention here. Jackie Kennedy, renowned as a fashion icon and revered first lady, had a surprising and lesser-known side to her persona. She was a chain smoker. Despite her elegant and poised image, Jackie maintained a habit of smoking three packs of cigarettes each day for over four decades. While it may be difficult to imagine her with a cigarette in hand, there are rare photographs capturing this aspect of her life. The reason for the scarcity of such photos lies in Jackie's influence and authority as the First Lady. If she preferred not to be photographed smoking, her wishes were respected. She also ensured that references to her smoking habit were kept out of print. Number 35. Johnny Cash Even at the tender age of 13, the iconic Johnny Cash was drawn into the world of smoking, a habit that would accompany him for decades. Starting his journey into cigarettes as a young teenager might sound surprising, but it sets the stage for a story that intertwines his music with his struggles. As the 80s rolled around, Cash's life took a toll due to his vices, including smoking and drug abuse. Health troubles emerged, with his heart bearing the brunt of the damage. Multiple surgeries on his knees, heart, and jaw followed. Unfortunately, his health woes extended further with the onset of autonomic neuropathy, a diabetes-related condition that led to the cancellation of his tours. Number 34. Red Fox In his later years, Red Fox's life seemed to be a tapestry woven with threads of stress, both personal and professional. This stress, coupled with his heavy smoking, left an indelible mark on his husky and distinctive voice. The traces of his smoking habit became more pronounced as time went on. 
During the production of The Royal Family, tensions flared between Fox and a producer, as revealed by Miss Della Reese. These conflicts added to the mounting pressure Fox was facing. It's worth noting that Fox had been an avid smoker in his younger days. The clash with the producer, layered upon his history of smoking, could have played a role in the heart attack that ultimately claimed his life. Number 33. Al Lewis, Grandpa Munster. Al Lewis, best known for his role as Grandpa on the iconic show The Munsters, led a fascinating life that took him from the circus ring to the world of television. Starting out as a circus performer in the late 1920s, he eventually pursued higher education, earning a PhD in child psychology from Columbia University. As the 1950s witnessed the rise of television, Lewis seized the opportunity, becoming a fixture on numerous live shows in bustling New York City. Among his notable TV roles, Lewis portrayed Officer Leo Schnauzer on Car 54, Where Are You? and achieved enduring fame as Grandpa on The Munsters. A distinctive aspect of Lewis was his penchant for smoking cheap cigars. Sadly, he passed away on February 3, 2006 due to natural causes. Reports suggest that following his cremation, his ashes found a fitting home in his favorite cigar box, a quirky touch that mirrored his colorful life. Grandpa. Number 32. John Aston. Even decades after the Adams family first crept onto the airwaves, the creepy, cookie, and altogether ooky family continues to be popular with fans. John Aston, who portrayed Gomez Adams, infused much of his own personality into the character, laying the foundation for Gomez's eccentricity. One of Gomez's defining traits was his love for smoking cigars, a quirk that resonated with viewers. Aston, a cigar smoker himself, saw it as a fitting detail for Gomez. Quote, I smoked cigars at the time and thought it would be right for the character, like growing a mustache, end quote. The character's preference for lighting up fresh cigars became an iconic aspect of Gomez's persona, with Aston emphasizing elegance by eschewing short cigars. However, once the show concluded, Aston left the cigar habit behind. Number 31. Groucho Marx. Beyond his comedic genius, Groucho Marx remains a timeless symbol of cigar smoking flair. Throughout his illustrious career in theater, film, and television, the cigar became inseparable from his image. Groucho adopted the cigar habit at just 15 years old after receiving advice from a seasoned vaudevillian that a cigar was an actor's most versatile tool on stage. Years later, Groucho imparted the significance of a cigar to his own son, explaining that it could come to the rescue if a line slipped his mind. He humorously noted, quote, If you forget a line, all you have to do is stick the cigar in your mouth and puff on it until you can think of what you've forgotten, end quote. Number 30. Burgess Meredith Burgess Meredith, known for his diverse roles and distinctive voice, battled with smoking throughout his life. Smoking heavily at one point, he vividly recounted a terrifying nightmare that transformed his relationship with cigarettes. In his dream, he was trapped in a burning building due to his cigarettes catching fire. The trauma of the dream triggered a profound change, leading him to quit smoking for years. During his time on the TV series Batman, 1966, Meredith faced an interesting challenge. Despite having quit smoking over two decades prior, his character, the Penguin, required him to smoke using a cigarette holder. Smoke from the cigarette holder would cause him to cough, disrupting takes. In response, he invented the iconic grunting Penguin laugh to conceal his coughing fits. He explained, quote, Actually, it was a pretty funny noise for a Penguin to make. I sounded more like a duck, end quote. After the series concluded, Meredith promptly quit smoking again. Number 29. Raul Julia. Cigars have woven into Raul Julia's life since his college days at 20, back when he primarily smoked cigarettes. Transitioning to cigars, he now savors one to two each day, favoring the post-dinner slot. His top choice is the Cuban Punch Double Corona, although he also indulges in Dominican Republic cigars, including those from La Gloria Cubana in Miami. Julia, who portrayed Gomez in The Adams Family, notes his character's affinity for La Gloria's, even on the golf course. 
With a lit cigar in hand, he quips, quote, Why pay $100 on a therapy session when you can spend $25 on a cigar? Whatever it is will come back. So what? Smoke another one. End quote. His laughter follows the jest, his baritone voice rendering his words melodious. He adds, quote, A cigar a day keeps the doctor away. End quote. Reflecting on the experience, he muses, quote, A cigar is as good as memories that you have when you smoked it. End quote. Welcome back. Thanks. Number 28. Oscar Levant. Oscar Levant, a lifelong heavy smoker and a user of pharmaceutical drugs for an extended period, passed away from a heart attack at age 65 in 1972. Well before the term multitasking became popular, Levant was often captured in photos playing classical melodies on the piano while concurrently chain-smoking cigarettes, consuming numerous cups of coffee, perusing movie scripts, and composing letters. Born in Pittsburgh in 1906 to Russian Jewish immigrants, Levant displayed exceptional piano talent and proved to be a challenging child to discipline. Number 27. Marlena Dietrich Marlena Dietrich's distinctive style and elegant persona were accentuated by her smoking habits. Both on screen and off, she was often captured with a cigarette in hand, adding to her allure. In films like Morocco and Destry Rides Again, her sophisticated and glamorous smoking style became an iconic part of her image. With thick smoke curling from dark lips, Dietrich exuded confidence as she inhaled, reportedly consuming up to 50 cigarettes a day. Back then, cigarettes held a seductive charm despite their deadly nature. But times have changed, and the allure of smoking has evolved. Number 26. Barbara Stanwyck Barbara Stanwyck's journey was marked by early independence and the habit of smoking, which she picked up at the tender age of nine and only gave up four years before her passing. Raised by her sister, a showgirl, Stanwyck had to mature quickly. She left school at 15 and embarked on a path that led her to the entertainment industry. Starting as a chorus girl, she later debuted on Broadway in 1926 and adopted the name Barbara Stanwyck. Sadly, on January 20th, 1990, at age 82, Stanwyck's life came to an end due to congestive heart failure and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Her wish for no funeral service was honored. As she had directed, her remains were cremated and her ashes were scattered over Lone Pine, California a place that held significance from her Western film endeavors. Number 25. Suzanne Plachette Suzanne Plachette's life was marked by both her career and personal struggles. Her association with smoking is evident from the packs of cigarettes on her vanity, a habit that likely contributed to her unfortunate fate, lung cancer. Despite her professional grace, Plachette occasionally bore physical marks, prompting rumors of domestic violence. Her beauty and reclusive nature made a cherished memory for many. In line with many celebrities of her time, she was a consistent smoker and battled cancer in 2006. While she declared recovery, a portion of her lung had to be removed. Sadly, she passed away in 2008. Number 24. Kathleen Turner Kathleen Turner is a force to be reckoned with, an embodiment of boldness. She's unapologetically herself, drinking, smoking, and swearing without reservation. Her intelligence shines through, and she openly discusses her enjoyment of sex. Despite a decade of singlehood following her divorce from property developer Jay Weiss, with whom she shares a daughter named Rachel Ann, she exudes confidence. For Turner, sex is a celebration of health, but she craves relationships that offer more than just physicality. Younger men, she contends, lack the life experience to captivate her. A brief fling with a man in his late 30s revealed the importance of depth and intrigue. I love doing live television, and I'm really glad they're letting me use my normal speaking voice. Number 23. Charles Lane. Charles Lane, an exception to the norm, stood firm as a teetotaler in the face of alcohol's allure throughout his life. Yet, he held a different sentiment towards smoking indulging in a daily pack of cigarettes for an astonishing seven decades. It was only when breath became a struggle that he chose to extinguish his long-lived habit. I must be the exception, Lane mused, 
acknowledging the dangers of smoking that claimed countless lives. A man of conviction, he defied the odds. In his final hospitalization in 1990, faced with labored breathing, he was asked about his smoking status. His response was definitive. He had relinquished the habit just 45 minutes prior. And thus, his final chapter was marked by a smoke-free resolution. Number 22. Vivian Lee. Vivian Lee's ascent to Scarlett O'Hara's iconic role in Gone with the Wind remains legendary. Among a sea of formidable contenders, including Betty Davis and Joan Crawford, Lee emerged victorious. As she graced the screen, her commitment knew no bounds. Working 16-hour days, six days a week for a grueling 125 days, her dedication was evident. Candid snapshots reveal her exhaustion. She carried the weight of every scene. In coping with the stress, Lee sought solace in her constant companion, cigarettes. A testament to her dedication, she burned through an astonishing four packs a day. Number 21. Lucille Ball The indomitable Lucille Ball left an indelible mark on entertainment history. A lifelong smoker, she unabashedly associated herself with cigarette advertising. Yet her loyalty lay with Chesterfields, not Philip Morris. During early production, a fateful encounter occurred. Caught smoking her cherished Chesterfields, she clashed with a vigilant Philip Morris representative, barred from displaying her preference. Ingeniously, Ball tucked her beloved smokes into a Philip Morris tin box, an incognito defiance that allowed her to continue indulging her habit. Number 20. Lana Turner Lana Turner's life was a series of trials and tribulations, marked by personal struggles and ill-fated marriages. Amidst these challenges, she grappled with alcoholism and an ardent smoking habit, both ultimately culminating in the throat cancer that would claim her life. Turner's struggles extended beyond her marriages. Her battle with alcoholism and constant smoking took a toll. In fact, her penchant for cigarettes was so prominent that they were often airbrushed from her photographs. The combination of heavy drinking and smoking resulted in a devastating throat cancer diagnosis in 1992. Enduring eight grueling weeks of radiation therapy for a malignant tumor became her painful reality. Number 19. Amanda Blake For three decades, Amanda Blake was a consistent two- to three-pack-a-day smoker. Unfortunately, this habit played a significant role in her life story. On August 16, 1989, at the age of 60, Amanda passed away at Mercy General Hospital in Sacramento. But what led to Miss Kitty's demise? Initial reports stated that the actress had succumbed after a prolonged battle with oral cancer. Blake's heavy cigarette smoking had taken its toll, leading to her undergoing surgery for oral cancer in 1977. Following her surgery, she devoted herself to raising awareness traveling across the country on behalf of the American Cancer Society. In an emotional testimony to a House subcommittee, she revealed that she considered herself a, quote, victim of oral cancer and attributed her condition to smoking. Had cigarette packages carried stronger warning labels, she believed, she might never have taken her first fateful puff. I got to think of it. He came here because he thought I might help him. Number 18. Walt Disney. Walt Disney's affinity for smoking cigarettes is a widely known aspect of his life. After World War I, he developed a heavy smoking habit, as evident from the numerous pictures capturing him with a cigarette in hand. Tragically, Walt Disney's life was cut short by lung cancer, a condition linked to his smoking habit. Interestingly, the Walt Disney Company has made efforts to downplay this aspect of his life, albeit with limited success. Reports have surfaced suggesting that Disneyland digitally retouched pictures of Walt to remove cigarettes from his hands. Visitors to the Walt Disney Presents attraction in Hollywood Studios may notice the absence of this iconic accessory in many images of Walt. Number 17. John Casal. John Casal's career was tragically cut short by lung cancer, a diagnosis he received in 1977. His history of chain smoking likely contributed to the development of the disease. Despite undergoing various treatments, his health deteriorated rapidly as the cancer spread to his bones. 
on March 13, 1978, at the age of 42, Cazal passed away. His talent as an actor was undeniable, characterized by his naturalistic approach and the emotions he could convey through his eyes, expressions, and body language. It's unfortunate that his life was cut short by the consequences of smoking, as he had the potential to become a legendary figure in the entertainment industry. Number 16. William Tallman William Tallman's lifelong habit of smoking cigarettes, which started at the age of 12, persisted despite growing awareness of the associated health risks. He was known to smoke up to three packs per day, even as warnings about smoking's dangers increased. Tallman gained recognition for being the first actor in Hollywood to participate in an anti-smoking public service announcement for the American Cancer Society. Despite being diagnosed with lung cancer and knowing he was terminally ill, he filmed the commercial. The PSA began with the poignant words, Before I die, I want to do what I can to leave a world free of cancer for my six children. Tallman's request was that the commercial would be broadcast after his death. Number 15. Keith Richards Let's take a guess here. Keith Richards probably started smoking at 17, which is a safe bet. That would mean he's been smoking for around 50 years, if we assume he averaged two packs a day, which is 20 cigarettes per pack. That's a total of 40 cigarettes per day. The total number of cigarettes would have grown to over 730,000 over time. However, Keith Richards is officially a non-smoker now. The iconic Rolling Stones guitarist revealed in an interview with CBS that he quit smoking cigarettes two years ago after 55 years of the habit. Richards has a history of cutting down on his vices over the years. He quit heroin in 1978 and stopped using cocaine in 2006. In 2018, he mentioned to Rolling Stone that he significantly reduced his drinking, indulging only in the occasional beer or glass of wine. He also shared with CBS that he successfully quit smoking two years back using nicotine patches and that he's noticed an increase in his stamina since then. You got the silver, you got the gold. Number 14. George Formby George Formby had a unique bond with his dog, Willie Waterbucket, which seems stronger than his relationship with his wife. Despite being advised to take it easy after suffering a heart attack in 1949, Formby continued his habit of smoking 40 capstan full-strength and woodbine cigarettes a day. He humorously referred to these as his, quote, coffin nails. Alongside his heavy smoking, he had a penchant for beef-dripping toast. Unfortunately, his health deteriorated and he developed a gastric ulcer and breathing difficulties linked to his smoking. Formby's health issues prompted doctors to take a closer look. They found several concerns, including high blood pressure, obesity, and heart problems. Number 13. Tallulah Bankhead Tallulah Bankhead exuded an extraordinary level of energy that left few capable of matching her pace. She maintained an astonishing habit of smoking more than 100 cigarettes per day, treating gin and bourbon like everyday beverages. Her reliance on a suitcase full of drugs aided her in sleeping, staying awake, and simply functioning. Known for engaging in numerous affairs with both men and women, her sharp wit, coarse language, and outrageous conduct, including impulsively disrobing, consistently stunned and scandalized those around her. Number 12. Michael Landon Famous for his role as Little Joe Cartwright on the beloved Western series Bonanza, Michael Landon had an on-screen identity that didn't escape his off-screen habit. During the show's run, Landon developed a significant smoking addiction, reaching up to four packs of unfiltered cigarettes daily by 1961. The extent of his habit even earned him a nickname among the set workers, Socks. This moniker came about because the scent of cigarette smoke had permeated his socks, as per IMDb. Indeed, Landon's smoking was no small matter. He continued with this habit for years until finally quitting in 1989. Sadly, Michael Landon succumbed to pancreatic cancer in 1991. Number 11. Gordon Lightfoot In addition to his impressive musical career, Gordon Lightfoot faced health challenges, including emphysema. 
His smoking habit, which he began at the age of 15 while singing in barbershop quartets, was a contributing factor. However, Lightfoot took a significant step by quitting smoking in late 2018. This decision was driven not solely by his emphysema, which claimed the life of his heavy smoker mother in 1998, but also by a pact he made with his youngest son, Miles. Despite his son's withdrawal from the pact, Lightfoot's unwavering determination to survive led him to uphold his commitment to quitting. While he stopped smoking cigarettes, Lightfoot maintained his taste for legal cannabis, jokingly mentioning a potential switch to edibles. Sadly, Lightfoot passed away on May 1st, 2023. Captain Wayne in the head, water coming in, and the big ship and crew was in peril. Number 10. Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell's relationship with smoking reflects the shifting attitudes towards tobacco over time. Initially taking up smoking at the age of nine, during an era when the harmful effects were not as widely understood, she became an established smoker by the time awareness of the dangers grew. Although nicotine addiction can make quitting difficult, Joni's enjoyment of smoking further complicated her ability to give it up. Joni's artistic journey began with painting, and she turned to music primarily to support her smoking habit during her school years. She even smoked during her pregnancy with a daughter she later gave up for adoption in 1965, expressing her hope for her daughter's health. Throughout her life, Mitchell maintained an unapologetic stance about her smoking habit. In a 2007 interview, she candidly stated, quote, smoking is one of life's great pleasures. Number 9. Desi Arnaz Desi Arnaz, known for his role as Ricky Ricardo on I Love Lucy, was a habitual smoker throughout much of his life. He often smoked on the set of the show and enjoyed cigars until his 60s. Unfortunately, his smoking habit took a toll on his health. In 1986, Arnaz was diagnosed with lung cancer and underwent treatment. During his illness, his former wife and co-star Lucille Ball remained supportive. They shared moments together in the hospital, watching tapes of I Love Lucy. On November 30th, 1986, the couple exchanged heartfelt words over the phone on what would have been their 46th wedding anniversary. Tragically, Desi passed away on December 2nd, 1986, at the age of 69, just two days after their conversation. His ashes were scattered and a funeral was held, attended by Ball and many others. Arnaz's death came shortly before Lucille Ball received the Kennedy Center honors. Desi's mother survived him by nearly two years. Number 8. Jack Webb John Randolph Webb's early life was marked by challenges. Raised by his mother and grandmother amidst severe poverty, his father was absent from his life. Webb also battled acute asthma from a young age until adulthood. Surprisingly, despite his health struggles, Webb became a heavy smoker, consuming up to three packs of cigarettes daily. He had a fondness for chili dogs and cigarettes, often engaging in late-night card games and drinks with his cast members. His dedication to work was remarkable, as he'd be alert at 7 a.m. the next day. Unfortunately, this lifestyle took its toll, making him appear older than his actual age by the late 1960s. Number 7. Sammy Davis Jr. In August 1989, Sammy Davis began experiencing troubling symptoms, a persistent tickle in his throat and a loss of taste for food. Medical examinations revealed a malignant tumor in his throat. Davis, a heavy smoker who often consumed up to four packs of cigarettes a day, faced a critical health challenge. Despite the suggestion of surgery, laryngectomy, for the best chance of survival, Davis prioritized preserving his voice and opted for definitive radiation therapy. Unfortunately, his cancer returned, leading to the removal of his larynx. After battling complications from throat cancer, Sammy passed away at his Beverly Hills home on May 16, 1990, at the age of 64. Put it in a dream, separate the solid and collect all the cream. Number 6. David Jansen David Jansen lived a life marked by heavy drinking and chain smoking, habits that ultimately contributed to his untimely passing at the age of 48. The actor was notorious for his excessive smoking, consuming a staggering four packs of cigarettes a day. 
tragically, his heavy smoking had severe consequences for his health. Following his death from a heart attack, a post-mortem examination uncovered extensive damage caused by smoking to his lungs and mouth. Additionally, signs of severe alcoholism were evident in his liver. The accumulation of these factors likely led to blockages in three major arteries, resulting in his fatal heart attack. Number 5. Julie London Julie London's life was marked by her heavy smoking habit, which she picked up at the young age of 16. Smoking became a significant part of her daily routine, often exceeding three packs of cigarettes per day. Unfortunately, this habit took a toll on her health. London's health began to deteriorate over the years, and in 1995, she suffered a stroke. Her condition remained frail for the next five years. In 1999, she received a diagnosis of lung cancer, but her weakened state prevented her from pursuing treatment. On October 17, 2000, she was admitted to the hospital after struggling to breathe and choking. Tragically, she passed away on October 18 due to cardiac arrest at the age of 74. Her once distinctive singing voice had been affected by years of smoking and drinking, prompting her to retire from professional singing. Number 4. Patrick Swayze Patrick Swayze, renowned for his roles in iconic films such as Dirty Dancing and Ghost, had a private struggle with addiction that was often masked by his charm and talent. His addictive personality led him to battle not only heavy smoking, but also heavy drinking. His friend and dance partner, Nicky D'Amico, remembered his struggles with alcohol and cigarettes, noting that he would often smoke around 60 cigarettes a day. Despite his undeniable talent and captivating smile, Swayze grappled with inner pain, fear, and self-destructive tendencies. His heavy smoking habit and self-sabotaging behaviors were intertwined as he struggled to overcome his addictive tendencies. Dr. David Hoffman, Swayze's oncologist, acknowledged the link between self-sabotage and his smoking habit. Number 3. Audrey Hepburn Audrey Hepburn, renowned for her grace and elegance, had a lesser-known habit that contradicted her polished image. She was a regular smoker, often consuming as many as three packs a day, equivalent to 60 cigarettes. Her smoking habit began in her mid-teens, around the age of 15 or 16. Despite her serene demeanor, Hepburn turned to smoking as a means to cope with anxiety and nerves. Despite being an introvert who cherished solitary moments, she was adept at socializing, often seen smoking with fellow actors during social gatherings. Notably, Audrey Hepburn had her preferred cigarette brands. In her earlier days, she favored Gold Flake cigarettes, an English brand, which she smoked using a long filter cigarette holder. Later in life, she transitioned to smoking Kent cigarettes, still using her signature cigarette holder. It's like drinking coffee through a veil. Number 2. Betty Davis Betty Davis, renowned as the Queen of the Warner Lot, was famous both for her acting prowess and her heavy smoking habit, which contributed to her distinct and weathered appearance. Remarkably, despite her extensive smoking, she defied the odds and lived to the age of 81. Surprisingly, Davis smoked on screen in only a fraction of her movies, and she was never associated with endorsing any cigarette brand as a spokesperson. Notably, her smoking wasn't limited to her roles. It was a personal habit that played a significant part in her life and performances. She often used cigarettes to enhance her characters and create memorable scenes. Off screen, her addiction was strong, and she could go through about four packs of Vanguard cigarettes each day. Davis openly admitted her strong dependence, claiming she couldn't even manage to go 10 minutes without lighting up. This habit was so ingrained that she was frequently seen with a cigarette in hand during interviews, even sparking up in dental waiting rooms and even while in the dental chair. Ironically, despite her excessive smoking, Davis managed to evade smoking-related health issues and lived a long life. She eventually succumbed to breast cancer, though it's reported that she continued her formidable habit of smoking around 100 cigarettes each day until her passing. Number 1. Marty Feldman Marty Feldman was a dedicated cigarette smoker throughout his life, often consuming an astonishing five packs daily. 
Tragically, he passed away from a heart attack in a Mexico City hotel room on December 2nd, 1982, at the age of 48, while in the midst of working on the film Yellow Beard. The film was subsequently dedicated to his memory. Mel Brooks, who directed Feldman in movies like Young Frankenstein, 1974, and Silent Movie, 1976, shed further light on the circumstances surrounding Feldman's untimely death. According to Brooks, Feldman was an avid smoker, consuming around half a carton each day, alongside copious amounts of black coffee. While the precise reasons for his early demise are multifaceted, the combination of heavy smoking and substantial coffee consumption may have contributed to his heart condition. And there you have it, folks. The 50 Worst Smokers in Hollywood History. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more amazing content.